you are now tuned in to the network, the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to a more simple language. Today's topic is section 5.9 of the CCNA exam, describe wireless security principles, or actually security protocols, WPA, WPA2, and WPA3. Sounds like a lot of flavors for some security protocols, right? So before we even get into that, let's talk about the evolution of security in general, right? So let's 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 think about like your house, for example. You have, let's say for example, like you have a, a simple chain lock or something, like one of these things at the bottom, right? And you went to the store and put it on a chain lock on your door, and the next day your house gets broken into, right? You realize, oh man. I need to either get a guard dog or what a stronger lock right so you go to the store home depot or lowe's or whatever you come back and you put a stronger lock maybe one of these little deadbolt locks or one of these little uh these little locks right here right and that same night your house gets broken into again what's your first inkling right the first thing you think about doing is getting another stronger lock right maybe a gun or something like that right maybe these one of these little digital locks right the point I'm trying to make is this is similar to what they did with the security protocols with WPA, PA2, PA3. Basically, these security protocols and principles, they got hacked into. They weren't strong enough, so they just kept making them stronger and stronger and stronger. Similar to the guy who had his house broken into and just changed his locks and put a stronger, stronger lock. So, what are the three? Well, actually, there's four. There's actually more than this, but these are the ones we need to study for the exam. What are the four uh, security protocols we need to talk about? That's WEP, WPA, WPA2, and WPA3, right? As you can see there at the bottom. WPA stands for Wi-Fi Protected Access. There's also Wi-Fi Protected Access 2 and 3, right? There's three security and three security certification programs developed by the Wi-Fi Alliance. Basically, the Wi-Fi Alliance is just like this, this, this company that certifies... Uh, these company, these other companies that come out with their Wi-Fi products, they have to put their stamp of approval on it before you can come. Let's say you come out with a some kind of device that has Wi-Fi, you know, uh, or Wi-Fi's radios on it, right? You can't just put it out there for sale. It has to be, it has to actually be um, approved by the Wi-Fi Alliance before you can just actually come out with your own, you know, uh, Wi-Fi products or whatever, right? So it was developed by the Wi-Fi Alliance to secure wireless computer networks the alliance divine defined these in response to serious weakness weaknesses researchers had found in the previous system wired equivalent privacy remember i was trying to talk about that in the, in the last video so basically like i said they came out with these security basically kind of like rules before you come out with your own product or your own um your wi-fi product and and these security protocols they just found vulnerabilities and um, hackers was just able to basically hack into these systems and, and crack the codes basically. So they had to make these security protocols stronger and stronger and stronger to where we're at today, WPA3. But before we even talk about the other three WPAs, let's talk about WEP, which is Wired Equivalent Privacy. It was ratified as a Wi-Fi security standard in September of 1999. It uses the RC4 cipher algorithm and that's the thing about these algorithms there's going to be different type of algorithms there's aes tkip and rc4 you just need to know the different types of algorithms they are you don't need to know the math behind it thank god for the ccna exam because it's, it's really like it's mathematical computations they use to kind of like chop up your your text and make it unreadable that's what encryption does right so we have these different types of encryption we don't need to know the math behind it we just know the different flavors TKIT, RC4, AES. AES is pretty much the strongest one today. But anyways, the shared key security method, WEPs can be either 40 or 104 bits long, represented by a string of 10 or 26 hex digits. I got two periods there. In 2001, a number of weaknesses were discovered and revealed. So in short, WEP is, it was trash. Bro, you're trash, bro. Is them tears, bro? Come on, bro, gotta get you together, boy. Okay, they came out with a security protocol. It lasted, I don't know, just maybe about two or three years before some people were able to hack into it and find these vulnerabilities. And the, the Wi-Fi lines basically had to come up with a new wireless standard, which is WPA. 
Wi-Fi Alliance first introduced this generation of WPA certification known as WPA. No, it's not WPA1, you would have thought, but no, they didn't know they had to make all these revisions, so that's why they simply called it WPA, right? They intended it as an intermediate measure to take place of WEP. It came out, I want to say it got ratified in 2004. Correct me if I'm wrong, or if you know the answer to that. That's your pop quiz for today. When did WPA get ratified? When did they actually solidify this uh, this security protocol? WEP came out in 1999, and then WPA came out a couple years later once they saw it got hacked into and all these vulnerabilities were discovered. Right? It's based on parts of 802.11i and included 802.1x. That's basically port security and um, and authentication. And then TKIP, which is another type of encryption, like I mentioned, it's a method for dynamic encryption key management. And there go the def definitions right there. 802.11i is a standard that specifies security mechanisms for wireless networks. And 802.1x is basically like, it's basically port security. So basically, you know how you got ports on these switches and, and, and devices and stuff like that, right? You can do security on specific ports, like on a switch, for example. That's 802.1x. WPA basically found they found all these vulnerabilities and hackers was able to crack into that too. So they came out with WPA2, which is pretty much a standard right now. It has, as of 2006, been officially superseded, or WPA was superseded by WPA2 since 2006, right? It requires the mandatory use of AES. Again, these algorithms, you don't need to know the math behind it, you just need to know different flavors. TKIP, AES. And then there's CCMP, not to be confused with CCNP, the other certification. It was it replaced TKIP, but it was still preserved in WPA2 as a fallback system. So that way you could, it's basically um, backwards compatibility is what they needed it for. So you could still use TKIP with WPA2. But once I fire up, actually in the next video, I'll show y'all like the different flavors that this wireless controller has. You know, there's newer ones that has the new version of WPA2, which is WPA3, which let's go ahead and take a look at that. Oh, and by the way, all Wi-Fi products need to have that symbol. So if you look in the bottom of your Wi-Fi, you know, router at home or something like that, I guarantee you they'll have that symbol on, on if not on the physical router, it'll be on the box. So today, well not today, they came out with WPA3. Why? Because they found vulnerabilities in WPA2, right? You would think like, we're probably gonna come out with WPA4 pretty soon, right? But WPA3 is fairly new. If you look on your cell phone or you know your Wi-Fi router, you'll see most of them nowadays, you go to Walmart, you can pick one up. They're, they're gonna be you know, WPA3 compatible, but they're most likely gonna be backwards compatible with WPA2 because that's pretty much the standard today on Enterprise and Soho Networks. Um, it was a replacement, obviously, to WPA2. Uses an equivalent 192-bit cryptographic strength in WPA3 Enterprise mode. Again, you don't need to know math behind these algorithms and the and the and the cryptography behind it. It's 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 a lot of like it's math basically that they use to chop up your your passwords or your your text and make it unreadable basically. So the Wi-Fi alliance also claims that it'll mitigate security issues posed by weak passwords so if anybody's trying to brute force into your devices or whatever um it'll 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 block somebody after a certain amount of time so let's say somebody trying to log into your wi-fi uh you can set the threshold to like five tries right after the fifth try it'll block you out right so it also provides the protection of management frames which my wi-fi my wireless controller has the ability to do it can also protect IoT devices. You know what IoT is, right? It's uh, Internet of Things. So, like, you know, you have nowadays anything can be a, considered a smart device, right? You have your smart TV, you got your smart microwaves, you got, I remember my boy, he had a smart refrigerator that let him know if, you know, his milk is running low without even opening the refrigerator, right? Well, all these devices connect on the Internet, and that's how they're able to become smart devices, right? Well, guess what? Those devices can be hacked in too, right? There's a video that I saw on YouTube where people are hacking into like, you know, baby monitors and stuff like that. That's why they have to have security for these Wi-Fi devices because people pretty much hack into them. 
Well, WPA3 offers security for uh, IoT devices, these smart, you know, microwaves and smart doors, and you know, people have home automation and they have all of these, you know, uh, autom automated window shades and stuff like that, and lights and stuff like that. All of that stuff can be hacked into. You want to ensure that those devices uh, are compatible with WPA3. Nowadays, most devices that are coming out that are that are you know have Wi-Fi capability, they'll be compatible with WPA3. So we compare the three types of wireless security protocols: WPA, PA2, and PA3. Basically, they all have different types of uh, encryption algorithms. Again, you don't need to know the the math behind the encryption and and all of that. And all this, you, you don't need to know all of that, right? But you do need to know at least the different types of flavors. The main standard we really need to know about is AES, right? That's the encryption standard that, that is mostly used today, especially in WPA2 and, uh, and, and WPA3. You don't need to know the map behind it. Just know that it has, you have the ability to do, I believe, 128 and 256 bit keys. You can do in between two, but those are the standards. Um, MIC are also called MIC is a uh, message integrity check pretty much all of them do that except for um yeah pretty much all of them do it uh it's basically message integrity check security improvement for a web encryption found in wireless networks uh there's also tkip yeah you know, i don't want to read all this to y'all but you know you can pause this and freeze frame it to see the differences between all the three wireless security protocols all right we back that is all I got for y'all today. That is my YouTube page. Please hit me with the like button so that way YouTube's algorithm, I've said that word a lot today, uh, can push this video out, you know, and increase my, you know, SEO statistics and stuff like that. That's my Twitter handle. Um, you know, smash that subscribe button. Also, if you want to see more of these videos, I'm going to be a little bit more consistent. I know I said that in the last video, but I'm going to really try to be more consistent. Um, you know, I'm revamping the YouTube page. Go ahead and take a look at some past videos and stuff like that. A lot of the old stuff that I have is still relevant today. So, you know, even even the old CCMP stuff that I have, I'm, I'm going to be studying for the ENRC. By the way, yeah, I'm not going to be doing any more wireless stuff. I'm just going to cover this wire. The next video, we're going to do WPA2. We're going to fire up the wireless controller and do WPA2 with uh, PSK. I know we created a wireless local area network but we're also going to create a add a password to it for now go ahead and comment like subscribe to the network Bruh.